A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another project video. So this time, I wanted to preface this by saying this project is not unique. I did not clearly did not come up with the idea for it in and of itself. However, I, I did a few tweaks that I think improved upon past projects I've seen online. Now, if you've been a longtime viewer of this channel, I'm, I'm, you know, huge both electronics fan as well as music fan. And one of the go-to projects for like electronics hobbyists is view meters. And they can range from something as simple as just bar graphs to like a full multi-band equalizer. And you can go as deep as you want into it or, you know, just have a simple uh, peak detection meter or whatever you want. And after seeing uh, a couple other projects, uh, namely one that was recently featured on Hackaday that use an OLED screen, I think very similar, if not identical to this one. And these are pretty cheap. I believe this is about like eight or 10 bucks uh, off eBay right now. It's a SSD 1309. It, the resolution is 128 by 64. And they come in like a handful of colors, like blue, yellow, white, and possibly green. I don't remember this model. Anyway, and they come in different sizes as well. That's the uh, 1.54 inch one. Uh, and this one is a 2.42 inch one. So it's quite a bit larger, same resolution. So it looks more pixelated. But I rigged this up so that it's easier for you guys to see. Now I'm going to fire up the demo. And I just wanted to explain a little bit. A lot of the uh, previous uh, VU meter implementations I've seen online, uh, they tend to look like, you know, the old timey uh, mechanical meter movements uh, with the needle that bounces to the music. I, I think everyone's seen a VU meter like that before. And they're pretty much timeless. They're awesome. They're like super interesting to look at and just watch it while listening to your music. And you can totally go that route. You can buy like basically new implementations of those. You can buy it for pretty cheap, something like 10 bucks uh, per like mechanical display. And then you can buy or make just a simple driver board for it. But I wanted to go the digital route. Now, a lot of the previous digital implementations I've seen, they, they map one to one. Uh, so let me actually just fire this up and I can demonstrate to you the software. So here I have a mode switch, essentially. I don't have it hooked up to a button. I'm just going to touch the wire to change it. So on N, there's no, like, no latency, nothing on the meter movement. So this potentiometer controls the position. And you can see when I let go, it, it stops dead in its track. And this is not how a mechanical uh, movement would work because the needle has mass and there's a spring connected to it to return it to the center position or to a fixed position after, after the signal goes back down to zero. The needle would kind of necessarily kind of vibrate a little bit. Uh, and also the needle takes a little bit of time to accelerate and decelerate because it's a physical sort of thing. You see, it's kind of wobbling, but that's just because I'm moving the wires a bit. Uh, anyway... So a lot of the implementations I've seen do this, where it's just, okay, set to 50%, bam, it's there in a second, and it doesn't move. So what I implemented was a sort of a physical response, and the way I did that was I applied a like a PID compensator, except for I'm only using PI in my case, so it's really just a PI comp compensator, and I tweaked the gains in order to uh, overdamp and underdamp it, to give it a response that lags behind. So if I switch this over, this is the underdamped. You can see here, the needle actually twitches how you'd expect a real one, a real uh, mechanical meter to work. And obviously if I slam it into either end post, I have a hard stop, uh, just like a real meter would have a hard stop that would prevent the needle from going beyond 0% or 100% to prevent damage to the mechanism. But anywhere in between, and you can see, it'll oscillate. Now, the the amount of oscillation and the amount of overshoot 
uh, and the acceleration and deceleration, all that uh, can be manually changed in my software by changing the PI gains. And that'll affect basically how fast it can, the value can change or uh, how much uh, settling time it requires. So this is, you know, very underdamped. So it's very loose. It oscillates a good like two or three cycles after I release, after I stop changing the potentiometers. You can see it's very bouncy. Now, if I move to the overdamped setting, you can see it's it's a little more sluggish than the other one. And it does still slightly overshoot. If I all of a sudden kind of push it down, you can see it travels a little too far and that compensates, but it's not nearly as much as the other one. There's barely half a uh, cycle of oscillation about this set point. And yeah, you can compare that if I can go back to the, uh, you know, no compensator. It's just bam, 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 no movement after. And the underdamped. I think I like this one the best because this kind of reminds me the most of, I used to use a mechanical uh, multimeter. Well, a multimeter that has like a needle. And I... I've grown accustomed to just, you know, measuring things with it and it reacts exactly like that. <laughs> and once again, this is the overdamped. This one's a little bit sluggish, you can see, to rise and fall. But once it it gets kind of near to the point, it, it slows down a bit and just slightly overshoots or undershoots. But yeah, and all these settings, are they're actually saved, so this is... It's sort of like an adaptive uh, a compensator where you can change the gains in real time. Uh, when I'm pressing this button, it's actually loading the gain values. Uh, so for when it's in the no compensator uh, function, you know, the, it basically ignores and it directly translates the output of the potentiometer to the needle. When it's in underdamped, it loads the gains for the underdamped setting. And then overdamped, it loads, it right overwrites those gains uh, with the overdamped settings. So, yeah, if you are interested in uh, seeing exactly how this code works, I do have uh, working code uh, in the Hackaday.io page. I have a link in the video description, and it's basically almost exactly the same code that's running on here right now, uh, just heavily commented. So that's hopefully of use to you if you want to implement this exactly as is. I'm still working on the software, so I'm not going to release the software for this exact implementation yet. I have a few improvements, namely uh, this display is software bit banged on the SPI. So uh, it maxes out. I have, I can hook up two displays at once uh, to this Arduino and a left and a right clearly. And as of right now, that maxes out at about 20 Hertz refresh per display. Uh, I want it to be quite a bit quicker because it kind of looks choppy if you change the value really quickly. I'd rather have kind of a smoother interpolation between different values of the needle position. So I'm going to port this to using hardware SPI, and I'm guessing that I'm going to be able to uh, increase the refresh rate, like something like an order of magnitude. So that'll definitely be a worthwhile improvement, but I'll need to make a couple of changes to the code to... Uh, keep compatibility. And if you are interested, this um, the background image I actually drew by hand uh, using a freeware program. Uh, details are in the uh, hackaday.io project page if you are interested. But yeah, I drew this in like a pixel program. And then uh, the program outputs like an array that I then copy and paste into my code. And then I just write a function that'll uh, render that to the display. And I am using one full frame buffer, even though I have two displays, I'm writing to them interleaved. So I only really need one frame buffer and then I'm oring the needle position data. So it's actually overwriting. Um, so it can display both of them simultaneously. And with this, it's easy enough. If you wanted to change the background, make it look, you know, curved or whatever you want, super easy to change that in my software. Uh, so long as you generate the array data correctly. Uh, but anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, once again, thanks for uh, JLCPCB for uh, allowing me to make like really super random videos like this. Probably planning on 3D printing some kind of case, having these two side by side. 
and making some sort of setup. I did think about um, having like a microphone input so that uh, you can just leave it in front of like any kind of stereo with the speaker and it'll just dance to whatever it hears. Or probably easier is just having direct line in audio and sampling uh, two ADC channels on here. Uh, as of right now, I just have this one potentiometer hooked up and the one display, but the final project is going to have two. It's going to be, you know, mirrored so that you can do left and right channel. Anyway, yeah, if you guys have any um, any suggestions on how I can improve this or any ideas I can add, uh, put them down below. This is still kind of in the prototyping stage, so nothing is fixed in stone. I can easily change, you know, the software, the hardware, whatever I feel like. So if you have any ideas on, you know, how to improve this or other features you think would be cool to have, you know, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, one other interesting thing is um, I actually implemented an arc on the needle. So you can see as I move it, both the top and the bottom aren't fixed clearly. And they move left and right slightly and up and down, just like a real needle would. Uh, it's just small attention to detail things that I... I think would make a digital meter like this just a little more convincing as but I know yeah I'm gonna sit here all day and play with this so before I end up boring you guys even more I'll let you go I'll see you in the next one bye